Amen. You can do anything, y'all, but fail. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I, uh, he can do anything. <laughs> Praise God. Praise uh, God. That's all it takes me back in the 90s. When I was just, you know, understanding my walk in, the, in this new transition of life. Amen. You know, and uh, that was one of the songs that by New Jersey Mass that uh, really enlightened me. I guess it was the early 2000s, I believe, around 2003 or four. But anyway, it was, uh, it stuck with me. And whatever I was going through at the time, I remember that, that particular song was, it lifted me up. Amen. And then I really started to really begin to see God's power work when I believed that he could do anything. Amen. And this is why songs are written and sung uh, to encourage us, to lift us up. I also was going over, uh, going over some of my old cassettes back in 2003 and 5 and 6 and, and uh, either farther back in the, in the early 90s. And uh, God was speaking to the old man. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And uh, Amen. he really put a lot of messages on my heart and, and, and a lot of things I can look at at the, at the time I was going through. Yes. And uh, it was... It was very beneficial to look back at those messages and look at the day. And uh, I even saw where the enemy had attacked me uh, during those times. Because he was upset, you know. I wasn't too much aware of his devices and how he operates. And uh, I could see how he was trying everything he can to keep me quiet, discourage me from bringing forth the word. And... Uh, Evidently, it didn't work. It didn't work. And it never does work when you really be fixed on, the, on God and His Word. So today we're going to be talking about winning the battle within. I said earlier, two months ago, we talked about a title here, uh, How to Activate the Power Within. And that was when he talked about the Holy Spirit. So this is kind of like a part two. Maybe two months apart, but it's still is relevant. You ever get a chance to go back and look at that message? How um, to activate the power within? It's about two months ago. But uh, this particular message, I believe, it will help everyone uh, uh, understand this battle as you grow in your walk with Christ. Um, some of you have been uh, winning the little battles now, and I can actually tell by what comes out of your mouth. And how your responses, uh, the things that's going on in, in your life. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a plus. That's a plus. So in Psalms 51, Psalm 51, David, the prophet, uh, um, had sinned with Bathsheba. And it hit him deep inside. Because his sin was not so much for her, but it was against God. And all sin affects God. Because his son died for our sins. Amen? And he goes on to say here in this verse 1 of 50, Psalm 51, Have mercy upon me, O God. Amen? According to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, Blot out my sins. Blot out my transgressions. It says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And for I acknowledge my transgressions. That is important. And my sin is ever before me. Against the, old, the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen. He's talking to God, but he's saying to God, he's saying, I was shapen in iniquity. I was born into sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Conceive me. Behold, thou 
desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with his up, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that thy bones which thou have broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out my, all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. See that? Create in me a clean heart, and blot out all my uh, iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Listen, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Go over verse 17. <clears throat> the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Here, David was very repentant. He knew he made a mistake. He could no longer deal with the sin that caused him to say he felt like his bones were broken. And he knew it was wrong, but he had to clear himself. Amen? So he had to have a repentant, when he says a concrete heart, that's talking about a heart that is repentant, a heart that is remorseful. Sorry. Amen. Uh, he, he regretted the wrongdoing. He regretted the guilt. The guilt, was, the guilt was overwhelming to him. So he had to clear himself. You notice when he says there in verse uh, 11, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. At that time, Holy Spirit didn't always strive with men. It was only with certain people. And he was afraid that he would lose the Holy Spirit. Amen. But a lot of times when we sin, the Holy Spirit's right there with us. We don't recognize him, but he's there. Because the Lord promised that he'd never leave us or forsake us. We are sealed into the, with the spirit of redemption. So he's always there. So that's the part that causes us to be convicted. That causes us to be remorseful. That causes us saying, you know, I, I can't live like this. i got to get right. Amen. If that's not in you, if that's not there, you probably need to be born again. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, when we look at that, this battle within, and this is where the battle starts. This is where it starts with all of us. So I'm going to actually leave this particular passage of Scripture, and I want to go over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter... Um, 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This is where we're going to be mainly getting most of our meat today. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And here in this passage of scripture, Paul kind of lets us know uh, where the real battle begins. And how we ought to and how we ought to deal with it. Because we're all going to be under attack and we've got to be able to understand how to respond to this battle within because, like you said, you, we said earlier in all our testimonies, you never know how somebody feels or what they're going through. Amen. Amen. So they got, to, they got to deal with it. Amen. Just like we have to deal with all battles within. He says here, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the weakness and gentleness of Christ. This is chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians who in the presence, verse 1, who in the presence of them base among you, but being absent, am I bold towards you? But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with the, that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as we walk according to this flesh, according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Amen? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly. But our weapons are mighty through God. Prayer. Fasting. Reading the Word. Holy Spirit. Amen? 
through God to the pulling down of strongholds, fear, anxiety, depression. These are strongholds, worry. These are things that pull us down. They suffocate us, or try to suffocate some of us. And he says, five, casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Imagination is just what it is. It's, it's an imagination. It's not reality. But to some of people, an imagination is a reality because that's all they see. Amen. That's all they see. You know, they imagine it, it's a stronghold. It keeps them bound up to the point where that imagination, you can't tell them it's a reality to them. Because their mind has become consumed whatever is in front of them. So he says, cast that down. How can you cast down an imagination when it's a reality to you? The only way that can be done is that the Holy Spirit prompts you with truth. Let you know that it's a lie. Amen? Amen. Let you know that that is not from God. Amen? Then he goes on to say, And every high thing, listen, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So now you have an imagination, and then you have high things that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And this is where most of the problem comes in that where people who struggle with, the struggle with the battle within is that they don't know the knowledge of God or enough of it. There's not a consistent you know, a flow of information or dialogue or fellowship with the Spirit of God to constantly let them know everything that you're going through, God is always willing to give you an answer Amen. or to warn you. But when we grieve Him, when we are in our sin and we don't confess our sin and we don't look at it like David looked at it where it got to the point where he says, look, Lord, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Well, thank God we are still with the Spirit of God. That was old time, but the new time we have the Spirit of God with us always. But what happens is that, you know, God doesn't leave us, we leave Him. Amen? Amen? So when He says, cast in imaginations and every hard thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against the knowledge of God. So you got these two things going on imagination that you think is a reality, and you got this high thing that absorbs itself above the knowledge of God. So how are you going to know it's above the knowledge of God? Only way that you know God. And you know how God operates, you know how God thinks, you know how the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, we have the mind of Christ. So meaning they have the mind of Christ that we have put ourselves in a position where our mind is renewed. Amen. Amen. And so all we do now is we, we think the way, the, the way God thinks. We see the way God sees. Amen. Amen. And this might not come to reality, some of us, but the only way you're going to cast anything down an imagination down, and every high thing is that you have God showing you, amen, prompting you that this is not from Him. Amen. People have, you, you look at people like drugs is one of the greatest weapons of the enemy because it alters your, it alters your mind. Remember, there was a movie, Altered States, I think it was back in the 80s or the 70s. It's about a guy who uh, and he was just going through some stuff in his mind. And it took him so far out that he, he lost himself. And that's when you look at some of these drugs and some of these things that kind of alters people. Uh, uh, alcohol alters people. It alters your function. It alters how you think. It alters your balance and your memory. And it affects you. I was coming down uh, DuPont Street all day and there's a liquor store across from Charlie Square. And it says, Inner Spirits. I said, there you go, they got the right name for it, but they have no idea what they're probably talking about because they just want to make a profit. They don't care if they sell you anything. But these things alter your spirit, your attitude. Another definition for spirit is attitude. So it alters how you think. So he goes on to say here, he says, he says, but mighty through God, point down strongholds, cast down imagination, never had things, also stuff against the knowledge of God. Listen, and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, it's our responsibility to
to win this battle within, that we have to make choices. We got to make choices individually, because you know, to to have a uh, to make a choice, we got to have at least two things to make a choice from. Amen. The truth or a lie. <laughs> Either one. Well, you know, the voice of this world, <coughs> the thoughts of this world, is always bombarding us. The Bible says uh, uh, Jesus uh, prophesied it. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Matthew 24, it says, Man's heart fell of him for fear, the things coming upon the earth. Okay, we look at things and we see all this stuff change and we see, a lot of people don't even see it. But a lot of these things are, they can create a lot of fear in you realizing and knowing that what man is trying to do. See, we have, we come across, we're in an uh, uh, information age now, we're getting information that is all around us. And it's not to have us fear that these things are coming upon the earth and they're going to happen. The Lord told us a long time ago it was going to happen. He said he's beginning the sorrows. That's not going to change. We shouldn't be afraid of what's coming down the pike. That should push us more to what God is saying. Because ain't nobody getting away. What you say, Joe? Nobody gets out alive. Amen. So it's going to affect everybody. But it's important that we understand and know that God's overall plan, in the end, we win. Amen. These said. things are going to happen. Jesus. They're going to happen. They're going to affect us. So he says, and, every, and bring into captivity every thought to the being of Christ. And the Bible tells us, as a man thinks, so is he. So in order to really win this battle within, we got to understand how we're thinking, man. We really got to understand how we're thinking. Because I've seen so many believers be negative. And everything comes to the mouth is negative. And you know what that does? You know, we, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You were justified by your words, and you're condemned by your words. So if you're speaking, justified means to be just and made right. But to be condemned by your words, it means you're held, in, you're held in captivity, you're held in bondage. So how you're talking can affect how you're walking. And eventually, you know, you ain't, you ain't, you just standing still. You're not moving forward in Christ. You're allowing these strongholds to keep you in fear, to keep you in bondage. And it's, it's bad to see believers who confess in Christ operate in a, in a realm where, you know, there's no result uh, in victory, in your victory over sin, and victory on a daily basis. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let me make it a little clear. Uh, people know a lot of information about what's in here. What's in the, in, in the Word. But to have it transferred over to a reality where your life changes is you got to let go, folks. Mm -hmm. You know, believe just means to accept. It means to rely on. Amen. It means to depend on. So that means regardless what you're in, Lord, you got it. Amen. The Lord can do anything. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, we got to really understand that and see that he can do anything. Not us, but he can. We, one of the things about salvation that I've noticed is that uh, uh, it's getting me more and more away from me depending on me. Well, I know the Lord will deliver me, but there was still something here that I thought I had to do. That I had to, you know, well, if I just do this and I do that, it'll work. That ain't necessarily true. In due season, I shall reap if I faint not. It's up to God. It ain't by what I do or what we do, because we doing this and we doing that. God's got to come through. No, he don't. God might want us to be in some mess for a minute. He might want us to go through something. Amen. Because his plan is different from our, Amen. his ways is different from our ways. Amen. His thoughts are different from our faults. Amen. So we think because it says something over here that God's got to come through. Well, God, you did say that. Yeah, I did say that. But that doesn't apply to that. See, now what you're trying to do is you're trying to run me. That's what God is saying. You're trying to operate me. You're trying to, because you do certain things, you're going to, you know, you can't put God in no box. You can't put him in no box. Well, God, you did say this. Yes, I did say that. 
But God is a, is a God where we have to really depend on Him and have patience. Mm -hmm. Now, faith is some of the things hoped for, evidence is not seen. Amen. See, a lot of times we give up because we, 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 you know, God, you should be here by now. Mm -hmm. My life should have changed by now. Mm -hmm. Well, hold up, hold up. It is changing in a way that you didn't think it's changing. <laughs> See? Yes. See, we look at it, we change to Him is different than change to us. God is, remember David said, Lord, you desire truth in the inward parts, and you want to make me know wisdom. This is where God, he wants us to understand on the inside, you know, just that we talk about winning the battle within. Because that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. That's where the battle is won within, when we realize within our spirit. Remember this, Proverbs 20, 27. Remember we said, the spirit of man is the candle of the oh, Lord. Amen. Watch this. Lighting all, all the parts of the belly or the inward man or the inward spirit. Amen. So if that's the case, is that we know that in order for a candle to be effective, it has to be lit. And when the candle is lit, we have light. So when you have light, dark is dispensed. Dark is, uh, is overtaken because of light. So once God uh, prompts our inner man, our spirit, we have light now. So when God gives us light, we got light. We see. We see that that thing that was an imagination ain't real. We see that thing that's also so against the knowledge of God it ain't no good. That's when we see it. Then we can only, only then can we, uh, uh, every, only then can we, when it says here, bring into captivity every thought to the business of Christ. That's the only time we can do that. We can bring that, 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 uh, uh, kept every every thought to kept uh, kept to the, of Christ is when we see it from God's perspective. It's not gonna work no other way. When we leave here, all of us will be somewhere by ourselves for a couple hours or minutes or whatever it is. And you ever know, you ever notice how when you're weak and you're uh, uh, tired and uh, you ever notice. That's the most times you, you, you come under attack. Now, you know why that is? Because, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe, or 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, I think it's uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 11, it says, at least Satan get advantage enough. We are aware of his devices. We're aware of his devices. We're aware of his schemes. We're aware of his mind games. Amen? When we tired and we're weak that's the time he t attacks the most mm -hmm. and this and it's, 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 it's something that is planned he plans this somehow during the day to get us in that state he's setting us up so we gotta be a, we gotta be a, very aware of what comes in and what comes out remember we talked about in mark chapter 7 verse 21 it says out of man becomes what evil thoughts Adultery, fornication, on and on and on. It says, what comes in a man don't defile the man, but what comes out of that man makes that man or that woman unclean. Amen. So what does he mean by that? So I can hear negativity. I can hear it and it go in. But I have to have a, a, a set up in me an answering system. An answering system, which is the Holy Spirit, that helps me understand. Hold up now. How do I respond to this? Do I take the bait? Do I allow the enemy to, to, to y'all listen? Do I allow the enemy to get me because, you know, the information that came in, came from the outside, that came in, is negative. So, if I let it sink in and take up root, it's going to come out. It's going to make me unclean. But I got to understand and realize where it came from. If God tells us that he has thoughts towards us, thoughts of peace and not evil, so you know it ain't from God. It's got to be from the enemy. So, you ever notice, uh, you ever notice when you, you're praising God and you're working for the Lord and, you, and, you, and you're serving Him, you ever notice how uh, either someone, your loved one or in your family or a friend, whoever, co-worker, causes you, and not even knowing it, they causes you to get into a, a different state of mind. Yep. Amen. And you be like, wow. So you start focusing on them. It ain't them. They don't even know it. 
They don't even know they're being puppeteered by the enemy. There's been times in our life when we was puppets for the enemy. Amen. Up in his string. Come on. Before you came to Christ, we were doing some things that we wouldn't think about doing now. Amen. Amen. Why? Because now we know we have been released. We've been cut down from the strings of Satan. Now we are taking the promptings and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So this is something that's going on and on over and over again. Amen? Amen. So when he says, bring to a captive every thought to the obedience of Christ, um, every thought to the obedience of Christ, we have to, in order to win this battle, we have to, like I said, we got, we, it's choices, either good or bad. We have to allow the word. Because the Holy Spirit, when it says in John chapter 14, 26 says, not a, not a spirit of God, not a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, will bring things back to our remembrance. Mm -hmm. And Jesus goes on to say, because Jesus is speaking, he says, whatsoever I have said unto you. That indicates a fellowship on our part with the, with the Lord. Now, when you go through some things in your life, ain't nothing coming back to you? That's a result of no fellowship with the Lord. Because when we put ourselves in a position to commune with Christ, to fellowship with Him, to take His Word and to believe in Him, when we're going through, and we're going to go through, we have to have uh, uh, an option. we got to have an option. we got to have another choice. Amen? Because usually things that come at us are always negative. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they're negative. They're destructive. They cause us to fear and get upset and get caught up in anxiety. Amen? Amen. So what happens is we've got to be able to have an option. And that option is Christ. Greater is He that is in you than He that's in the world. Amen? Amen? Yes. So we've got to get the greater one. We've got we to get the greater one in us. And we've got to be able to get why well, He's so sensitive. We're so sensitive to His voice that all this stuff that's out here that don't bother us. Because every day we see reports about how evil this world is. Amen. And how long before we even know what man was doing, it, man is treacherous. The Bible tells us, in, uh, uh, I believe in uh, uh, at Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful, the wicked above all things. Amen. Who can know it? Amen. The Bible goes on to say in that same verse, it's a couple of verses up there, 17, 5, it says, Cursed is the man who trusts in the arm of flesh. In other words, man. Mm -hmm. We can't trust the man. You look at all the devilish and demonic things he's doing. Mm -hmm. And even though it's coming to us now by way of, uh, of, of mass media and communication, it's been going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been going on, but we've been deceived for years and had no idea about it. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. That's the world. That lets me know that God is right. Amen. Yep. That lets me know that all that rhetoric out there has been going on for years. You know? And it tells us, and I believe in Genesis chapter 6, it says, it says, uh, uh, God saw and repented that he made man. He repented, he said, man, I repented that I ain't made man. Because uh, all the thoughts and intent of his heart is evil continuously. Mm. So man ain't going to change from the get-go. But see, we, we change from how we think, because that's who we are. How we think that we change. We, that's what about, we renew our mind. We, we think on things that are just and pure and lovely. I mean, the more reports I hear about what man is doing, let me know that I can say, God, thank you for being right. Because I can't allow my mind to be caught up in that, because it will affect me within. Mm -hmm. And if I lose the battle within, man, I can't, my, my, I can't express the, the spirit from without. I can't express them out of my life. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's sad to be around believers uh, uh, always got a, something negative. Yeah. I wrote something down here uh, uh, and, it's, and it's, I thought it was powerful. Um, how if you live in a negative state of mind, you will never succeed. It's common sense. Amen. You're never, you're never go forward. Yeah. You're never be able to pick up the positive things in your life. Yeah. You know, it, 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 these things will hold you down, because the Lord don't want us to operate in that. But He told 
uh, uh, Joshua when Moses had died. In Joshua chapter 1. He says, my servant Moses is dead. Now you got to lead him. And even though Joshua was under uh, Moses, he learned from him. He learned from him. But it was when he was, now Moses is going to the scene, God said, come on. But he, he told him three or four times in that chapter 1, be of good courage. Be of good courage. Don't be afraid. I got you. Just like I delivered Moses, I'm going to deliver you. And see, we gotta have we gotta have some courage sometimes. Even though things frighten us and hold us down, we gotta have some courage to really say, God, okay, you got it. Because why? God can do anything. We say it. Amen. He can do anything. And then people gotta have, you know, it's sad when courage and and and, and confidence. This thing, this thing of uh, uh, low self-esteem and, and, and uh, uh, self, low self-worth is from the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's from the enemy. Mm -hmm. yes. We look at that and it, it's actually, it falls in line of self-pity. Mm -hmm. You know, well I can't. Yes you can. I can do all things and questions should for me. Amen. You know, Paul ain't just saying that. See, we got to say it. We got to believe that. We got to believe it. We could do all things in Christ. No, we got to put ourselves in a position to strengthen us. How does he strengthen us? He says time and time again. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. He said, Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus. He says, look. He says, that you be strengthened. I pray that you be strengthened in your inner man by the Spirit of God. That goes back to Proverbs 20, 27 again. That's how we're being strengthened. When it says in Proverbs, I mean, John chapter 6, verse 63, Paul says, my words are spirit, they are life. So this word, this word here is spirit. And when you hear it, I mean, it, I can't explain it, but I know it works because the imaginations and the things that hide things that exhaust them against the knowledge of God they all fell down when, when I believed them. When I believed the truth. And when I believed the word, I was able to bring things in a, 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 every thought to the captivity and to the beings of Christ. I was able to say, you're a liar. Satan, you know, the Lord rebuked thee. I was able to understand and see from God's perspective. And when I believed that, God gave me the power to overcome. It wasn't that I was doing it. I was believing that what he had said, and it was the truth. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Go to uh, Romans chapter uh, 7. And this is always a good one. And then Paul, here, Paul is, he's a human like us. He was a human just like we were. But he had that struggle with him. But he came to a conclusion why the battle was taking place, and he actually came to a conclusion. He says here in Romans chapter 7, uh, he says now in um, 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, okay? But he said, I'm carnal, I'm fleshly, all right? So the sin, for that which I do, I allow not. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not, but what I hate, that I do. What I hate, that I do. How many times I ain't doing that no more? Mm. I ain't let them get me upset. All of a sudden, I hate it and I did it. Amen. Then he goes on to say, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now, here, I want you to look at the difference here in the I. The word, the letter I. So here it's going to explain... Paul is saying, even though he's in this body, but in this body is a new man, is a new way of thinking. And he's going to explain here now, talking from that perspective. I know this is going on because my flesh, but I'm, I'm renewed on the inside. And this is the way I have to operate because he's going to explain it more. Y'all ready? Then he goes on to say, now then, here is 17. Now then, it is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. See, he distinguished himself. He made a difference. Even though I'm in this body, but now I got a new mind. I got a new heart. I got a new power. I got a new way of thinking. I got a new spirit. So he says, for then there's no more I that do it, 
but sin that dwelleth in me. Listen. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which I, which is good, I find not. Watch this. Well, here it is, 19. For the good that I would do not. For, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now he goes on to explain. Pay attention. Now if I do, now if I do that I would not, would not, not, it is no more I that do it. You see the difference? That inner man, ain't, no, ain't me doing it no more. I ain't mean to do it. I didn't set out to do it. I didn't make my mind to do it. But all of a sudden, flesh just has a way of just messing up anyway. Amen. Amen? Without me even aware of it. It's just, it's, it's slit like that. It's just that nature. That's why he says, now if I do it, I would not, would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So he's recognizing within him there's a force. There's a there's something that will never ever surrender to the Spirit of God. And that's the sin nature. Amen. It, ain't gonna, it ain't gonna say, okay, I give up, you win. Yeah, right. You got me. No, this is the part that the enemy operates from. That's his doorway. We talked about that before. That's his doorway is through the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now, if he can get us, first of all, he can get us in imaginations. When your mind is idle and when you ain't really, really putting his word forth on a daily basis and hearing positive things from the word of God, what happens is Satan get in there, man. Yes. He get in there. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, I believe, it says, uh, 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 the, 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 the prince of the power of the air. You know what I mean? That's the thoughts. That's how he comes. He comes in the way of thoughts. Amen? But then he goes on to say, uh, 21, watch this. Now he comes to a conclusion. That I, I find that a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Then he goes on to say, for I, he says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So that's that's a clue right there. That, I mean, that's the whole message we talk about when the battle within. You gotta delight yourself, the law of God after the inward man. That's how you're gonna win. There's no other way we can win if we don't like in the, what 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 is what did God say in this situation that I'm in? In this crisis that seems that I'm in, or this storm that I'm in. God said, amen, he can do anything. <laughs> amen. Watch this. He says, 23, he says, but I, see, I, see, I, I see, I see, listen, I see another law in my members. Now, I is that new man. See, if you're still going through stuff, I, I see it yet. Because only the inward man is the true you. Amen. The inward to change you can see that in your members, you can see something warned against the law of your mind. That's the battle. See? That's the new you. I see what he's trying to do to me. Like I testified before we even came up here, uh, how what was going on before I even came to church today. Left stuff home and forgot this and forgot that. Trying to upset me. Trying to get me off balance. Trying to get me caught up in self. So if I get caught up in self, what I'm doing, I'll be blocking the Spirit of God from coming forth right now. Amen. Amen. You see that? Amen. Oh man, he's come at you, man. But you got to recognize it. So I realize that it's, it's a law in my members. I see another law in my members warring against the law in my mind. Listen, and bringing me, bringing me into captivity. That's the same word back there, isn't it? In 2 Corinthians. Bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Now, he just told us, he says, and uh, 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 bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's what we have to do. So now, through the way of my flesh and through the way of my old nature, he wants to hold me there. That's the war within. That's the battle within. Amen. 
You don't know how you, how is it when you're tired? You don't want to go nowhere. You don't want to do nothing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's like, you know, look, man, I'm tired. I, I don't feel like doing nothing. You know what I mean? You're tired. <laughs> okay? Like I said earlier, you ever notice how Satan attacks us when we're tired or we're weak? But that's, that's, that's all, that's not by coincidence. That's part of his scheme. That's part of his trickery. That's part of his deception. And it does not stop. It does not stop. As long, that's what Jesus said in John 16. As long as you're in this world, you're going to have, you're going to have uh, frustrations. You're going to have trials. These things are going, you're going to go through these things. But Jesus says, take heart. I have overcome the world. And the five Bible says, I have deprived the world of his power over you. So if I don't know that and know what he said and believe what he said, man, I, everything's going to overthrow me. Everything's going to deceive me. Everything's going to upset me. Everything's going to cause me to be all out of shape. So we have to win the battle within. And the battle is won on that one particular verse in Romans 7, 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Delight means you put everything above. You put, you put God above everything. That's how you're going to win. Because that's how he's going to... Listen. It may be said he's the door. No man comes to the Father but by me. Do you know the door is in your own life? Your spirit. Your spirit is the door. Why do I say that? I'm saying it again. Listen. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Like normal parts of the, of the belly. So this is how good. That's why David. Oh, look. Y'all got to go back and read it again. Look at Psalms 51. Let's go back and read it again. Lord have mercy. Watch this. 51, 6. He said, here, watch. He says, behold. He says, thou. He's talking to God. He says, behold. God, you desire truth. Truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You ain't going to get it no other way. That's the difference of being born again. That's the difference of having a new spirit. Why? Because when you had a new spirit in Ezekiel chapter 36, 27, he said, I'm going to place my spirit in you. And listen, and I'm going to cause you to keep my commandments. This is the only reason why you have victory in your life. Because God has prompted you and gave you the ability to overcome. Because your spirit has been renewed and has been transformed. Amen. Now, His Holy Spirit takes a residence on the inside of us. You hear me? Mm -hmm. That eternal flame that never go out. Greater is He. Say it again. That is in you than He that's in the world. I don't care what Satan got out here. If I hold still, say, God, you got it. God, you show me. God, you lead me. God, you protect me. He does it every time. Amen. 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 That's what he talks about in John 14. Ask what you will, and it be done unto you. Amen. Don't care what it is, because we are blessed. We have the power of God within us. Man, I'm, oh, okay, all right, all right. I'm in. Okay. Come in, John. A different route here. Go to, go to. Uh, we get. Now, let's, let's finish this Romans seven right quick, okay? Mm -hmm. So he says. And bring me to captivity the law of sin, which is in my members, verse 24. Now here's the cry. He says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind, with my mind, we know the mind is the first battleground. With my mind, I myself, I myself, He's talking about the new man. I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. <clears throat> you see? But with the flesh, the law of sin. So he goes on. He, oh, man. No, no, no. What y'all doing to me here? <laughs> Galatians chapter uh, uh, 5. Come on now. Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You notice the Spirit is capitalized? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 is capitalized. That's the Holy Spirit. 
He ain't saying walk in our spirit. We got to walk by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Because we surrender. We have yielded to the, the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then he goes on to say, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that ye cannot, listen, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Satan don't want you to do the, the walk after the spirit. That's why he attaches us to the flesh. Because that's the only door he has. Yep. The door of feelings. The door of emotions. You look at the components of the mind, the components of the soul, you got feelings, emotions, uh, uh, imaginations, intellect, personality, all these mind things, you know what I mean, got to do with the mind. Amen. But the spirit overrides all that. Amen. <laughs> the spirit is the one, this is the new us. This is one look. Remember, the, the, the body goes back to the dust, but the spirit goes back to God. When you were 21 and 15 or 16, do you have the same body you had then? Nope. You don't look the same. Hmm. People fighting them look the same, but it ain't going to work. <laughs> they pull them back, tucking in, tucking out, doing everything they can <laughs> to make things look different. But you're going back to the dust. Amen. It's so sad. You see, some people just want to change everything. It's almost like, what are you doing? You're 80 years old and you, 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 can't, you can't have that no more. That's it. You know, but you can't tell them that because they're still living after the movement of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You see, they've gone to the flesh. Watch this. Amen. Mm. Oh, praise God. Look at Romans 15. Romans 15. Romans 15, look at uh, 4. Romans 15, 4 says this, watch. It says, For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. i read it again. So whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning. Do you know ain't nothing new under the sun? Amen. It's somewhere in this word, from Genesis to Revelation, we can find ourselves. We can find a similar situation. Somebody has been through something. Amen. It's in there. Amen? And he says, he says, we're written for our learning. We got to go learn it. Remember last week we talked about Jesus when he told his disciples before he was leaving the earth? What did he say? He says, teach them to observe the things that I have told you to do and teach. You know what doctrine means? Proverbs 4 I think it's 4-2 or 4-4 or four, four says this. I think it's 4-2. He says, I give you good doctrine. In other words, doctrine just means teaching. This just means teaching. We've got to be taught this word. We've got to be taught the word of God. We know, we know the difference between preaching. Preaching is proclaiming the word of God, but teaching is explaining the word of God. We, not, a lot of people hear stuff, but they don't know what it actually what it means. So we have to be, we have, we, first we've got to have a teachable spirit. And only what's going to happen is that we, you know, God is there. And we got to want it. Amen? Amen. He says, we're well, written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort, listen, of the scriptures, might have hope. So all this has to do with the word of God. And you cannot can't emphasize so much more. In the beginning was the word, the word was of God, and God was the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1, 14. It's, the, it's something about the, the word of God that Today is looked upon as a negative in this world. They don't want the word. The world does not want truth. It does not want truth. I mean, and God, God prophesied. He told us this is going to happen just like a lot's day. All these things is happening in the world. Now it's going to happen. And it's happening right before our own, own eyes. And that's to give us understanding. Say, you know what? God's word is true. His word is true. Remember, he says, heaven and earth are going to pass away, but my word is going to last forever. Well, I'm going to be with the word, man. I don't know about you. I'm going to stay with the word because it's going to last forever. So one day all this stuff is going to all be over. It's going to all be over. All the accolades, all the rewards you get on this life, ain't nobody going to care. You're going to be, what, what does it mean? In eternity. doesn't mean anything. The Bible, and, and, and uh, one thing that people feel is done because they go to church and they go to Bible study and they do some religious things, that's okay. You got to do more than that. You got to do more than that. You know why? Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. You got to do more than that. Jesus told his disciples, he said 20. He said, where's it at? He said, uh, let me see here. He says, 
For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall never in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So in other words, you know how they were. They were fakers. They weren't real about this thing. They was just there. They were religious, but inwardly they were they was raven wolves. They had no spirit of God. So it had nothing to do with it. And there's millions and thousands of people who are packed at these churches don't really understand the battle within because they have never received the spirit of God. So they're going on just week after week you know, service of the service, thinking that they're on their way to heaven. And that's why I said something, Lord, Lord, we haven't done this. He never, I never knew you. Your work is on your knees because that's why David said, at the beginning of this message, David says, Lord, I've sinned against you, and only you have I sinned. Amen. Forget everybody else, because you're the only one, you're the only one to put me someplace. Amen. You got control of my life. I don't care about nobody else. Lord, forgive me. You want, you want me to know truth in the inward parts. So this is where we got to win this battle. We have to win the battle within. But you got to go back two months ago and look at the message, how to activate the power within. Because we got we got to know that these kind of go together. we got to be able to activate that spirit within us. Because I'm telling you, I, it took me a while to get to this point. You know, and I still got a long way to go. But at least I, 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 I'm to the point now, I, you know, I, I recognize the choices I have every day. I recognize the decisions I have to make every day. I got to make the decisions every day. Now watch this. Uh, uh, watch this. Praise God. Let's close on these two, three verses. I want you to see them. Just three verses. I'm just going to read them, but I want you to see them. Go to Philippians chapter one. I want you to see these three verses. Wow, they're powerful, powerful. Philippians chapter one. What does this indicate? This indicates to us all these verses indicate to us that we don't do anything but believe. Amen. That's all we do. Amen. That's all we do. You know, it's a person who's always been self-motivated and, and uh, uh, confident in their own abilities, sometimes it's, it's harder for them kind of individuals to really trust God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you always rely on yourself all your life. I can do it. But it's not got nothing to do with you doing anything. You can't do it. Save yourself. Amen. Being a, old, I mean, a, a poor crocodile, save yourself. They got you. Amen. They gonna tear you apart. <laughs> you gonna need help. All right, watch this. Philippians chapter one. Look at verse six. Being, he says, being confident of this very thing that he which had begun a good work in you. What's that work? That's the work of salvation. What work is that? The work of salvation. That's understanding that God is placing you eternity. He says, listen, we'll perform. He's going to perform it. He, talk about God, the Spirit, will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So what do you do? What do I do? He has begun to go work in us. And He will perform it. So we got to get out the way. Amen. We just got to believe God. Yeah, we're in the storm, but God, you're going to take me through. Why? Because all things work together for good. Watch this. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Watch this. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. There it is again. Get out of the way. Amen. You want to win the battle with him? Delight yourself in the inward man. That new man. That's what you got to delight him. Now here's the last verse. First uh, uh, Thessalonians chapter 5. Watch this one. Woo! I love this one. I love this one. Watch this. Mm. You ready? Mm. 24. Faithful is he. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First, faithful is he that call you who also will do it. Oh my goodness. He's going to do it. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. All we got to do is believe. Our belief system is being under attack because, partially it's because 
of our poly slowfulness and, and uh, not setting aside a time to God to speak to us on a daily basis in prayer and reading. This, this is where, I mean, the forces of the enemy is, is, is far too powerful to neglect a spiritual meal. <laughs> it's, it's, you can't, hey man, you, you can't miss no, you can't miss no meals, man. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. You know how hard it is for people to fast? Huh? Let's say we're going to fast for a whole week. I don't know about that. Let me see here, you know. First couple of hours, you know what I mean, hamburger talking to you. You know what I mean? I mean, these things, we got to come clever with ourselves and realize that the only way we're going to win this battle within is to light ourselves in, in, in the law of God after the inward man. We got to build that spirit up. We got to build it up. The reason why you're, you're confident now about some things in your life, because you're, you're, it's like, you know, you're in a, in a, in a cabin and the, and the flames over the uh, 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 stove, I mean, what do you call it? The fireplace is going down. What do you do? Go out and get some wood. You throw more wood on it, right? The fire booms. It's blooming. Now you get close. Now you're getting warmer, right? That's the same thing with your spiritual man. You got to load up on the word. You got to load up. Amen? Amen. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Amen. 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 Amen.